Dear American citizens, Much like the way our government lies to its citizens about the economy, unconstitutional wars like Iraq and Afghanistan, and how the will of the people is basically ignored, like what happened with the financial bailout, bailout and stimulus plan, is the same kind of lies the government has invented about cannabis. Since our illustrious, honest, no good President Nixon initiated the Controlled Substance Act of 1970 and the subsequent formation of the Drug Enforcement Agency, nothing but lies and propaganda have been fabricated and woven into the minds of the American people concerning the truth about this herbaceous plant. Stories invented in the early 70s told of how the cannabis user or pothead, as the powers that be referred to us, were going to become heroin addicts and would basically be, amount to nothing but dismal failures. We were told we would never be able to achieve success in higher education, and more than likely we would become sterile and able to, unable to have children of our own. We were stereotyped as drug addicts and drug dealers that were swimming in narcotics in the drug trafficking world, and that basically we would do violent crime if we smoked pot. Most of the people smoking cannabis then and now never understood why our government was lying to keep this enforcement propaganda going and why so many innocent lives were being ruined by incarceration just because we were exercising our right of freedom of choice to use a safe, non-addictive herb. We were horrified when Nixon and his cronies sprayed Paraquat on Mexican cannabis fields and here in the United States that they knew was bound for the lungs of American citizens. When challenged then about this horror, they dismissed it as, oh well, they are just smoking pot, they deserve it. Didn't we go after Saddam Hussein because he was doing chem chemical warfare on the residents of northern Iraq? Who do we go after here in our government that decided it was okay to do chemical warfare not only on the Mexican farmers, but also against the health of millions of Americans that were merely exercising their inalienable rights of freedom of choice to use a safe therapeutic herb for whatever reason? How would the boozers and cigarette smokers out there in America like it if those substances were controlled and produced by the murdering cartels? Would you rest comfortably after having your 5 o'clock martini, knowing that what you just drank could have been adulterated with unwanted substances because the people who produced that for you are ruthless murderers? Do you people in America ever think about how dangerous it is for the cannabis smokers in this country since we have this law that gives control of our cannabis to ruthless murderers? Do you think that not only do we have to worry about law enforcement, but we have to worry about our cannabis having some dangerous compounds on it, or worse, bodily fluids, fluids from some drunken cartel members that care about as much for the cannabis smokers as does our own government? I'm not sure which of these two entities are the worst. We wouldn't have to worry about either one, though, if cannabis was legal, and we were allowed to grow our own organically and free of dangerous pesticides without all of the gang activity, the murders, the gung-ho DEA, DEA agents that obviously have some job security agenda they are enforcing. Most of all, the cannabis smokers can grow their own much cheaper than the cartel price that continues to bolster and fuel cartel power and influence. Do you people in America ever think about these issues that cannabis smokers deal with daily and have done so for over the last four decades? All of the propaganda generated by the government continues today and is reinforced by everyone in law enforcement, DEA, Border Patrol, Coast Guard, and reality shows like Border Wars that is basically a show about filming Homeland Security doing cannabis interdiction along the border. Every time a seizure is, ma is made, they refer to it as narcotics, drugs, and drug dealers, and this, just is, this is just another method of trying to make cannabis something it isn't, and that's dangerous. The International Office of Drug Control Policy through the United Nations controls drug policy for the world, including the United States, through our association by the Singles Narcotics Treaty of 1961, which was the parent precursor of our Controlled Substance Act of 1970 from Nixon. Language written into protocol by this office in their 2010 report no longer refer to cannabis as narcotics, drugs, pot, dope, marijuana, etc., but simply as cannabis herb or cannabis resin for hashish. With law enforcement here in America, it is always narcotics or drugs when they are referring to cannabis. The United States is required to follow the same protocol, yet we don't. 
they never refer to it as cannabis herb because that sounds like something safe and they would have a difficult time enforcing its use. Research has been proven that cannabis is not only a very beneficial herb, both medicinally and socially, but also that our brains are hardwired with cannabinoid receptor sites specific for canna- cannabis. In other words, we're born with them. Research has also proven that cannabis is not addictive, does not cause lung cancer like cigarettes, and cannot cause a death by overdose. This is indicative by the fact that there's never been a death attributed to cannabis overdose, nor has there ever been an emergency room visit by anyone suffering from a cannabis overdose. Cannabinoid receptors in the brain are limited for the amount of THC that can bind to these specific receptor sites. And the stronger the cannabis variety, these receptor sites become even less available. And that is why cannabis can't cause overdose, and that is why it's not addictive. Its biochemical pathway does not follow the dopamine pathway that is associated with addictive substances like cigarettes, alcohol, and prescription drugs. The lethal dose of cannabis has been determined. A lethal dose is that amount of a substance a person would have to ingest to cause overdose and death. And it has been determined for all substances of abuse, whether they're legal or illegal. Cannabis lethal dose occurs if you're able to consume 1,500 pounds of cannabis flowers in one puff. This amount of cannabis couldn't be consumed by 10 hardcore cannabis users over their entire lifetime. Doesn't common sense tell you this herb is safe? Look at the fact that alcohol is responsible for 150,000 deaths annually in this country and cigarette kills another 450,000. Add in the prescription drug deaths and another 200,000 lives are lost. It doesn't stop here, unfortunately. Through the efforts of the DEA trying to interdict and enforce cannabis laws, we have created violent cartel gangs that are responsible for another 60,000 innocent people murdered so the cartel can operate their cannabis business. It is about who controls the cannabis market entering the United States that is the money maker for the cartels. Sure, they're involved in other illicit activity like human smuggling, illegal arms acquisition, and cocaine and heroin smuggling to a limited extent, but the cannabis market is the primary source of income for the cartels. Since the 70s, Over 120,000 of the more than 30 million American citizens incarcerated for cannabis possession in America died from contracting AIDS when sent to prison. This is absolutely insane when you look at the fact that this herb is safe, doesn't kill like the legal tobacco and alcohol and prescription drugs that statistics show are deadly, and yet Americans stand by and allow our government, the DEA, Homeland Security and the Bureau of Prisons to basically run wild with their lives and ruin, run wild with their lies and ruin the lives of innocent and productive citizens. This is totally wrong and uncalled for. And as Americans that supposedly depend on our freedom and the pursuit of life and liberty declared in our Constitution, how do we stand by and allow this to happen for even a second, let alone allow the propaganda and bullshit to continue? It is the individual right of any American to decide what goes into their bodies. This is not under the scrutiny of anyone, and it is not the place for government or private citizen to determine that for another human being or fellow citizen. It is not the business of anyone to judge another if they choose to use this safe, beneficial herb, and it is certainly wrong to arrest and incarcerate them for this and basically make them a criminal and ruin their future. How many of you out there that enjoy drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes would like it if you're headed home with your six-pack on the front seat of your car and you were pulled over by law enforcement, thrown to the ground for possessing your booze, and that you were going to be arrested and thrown in jail? Certainly your substance of choice would deem that sort of behavior if you look at the facts and statistics that prove how deadly alcohol and cigarette use are. Yet, as a society, we allow people to choose for themselves to take these deadly substances without any retribution from law enforcement to possess them. Yet, we wage this stupid drug war against the cannabis user and spend billions of taxpayer dollars in the process. Do any of you Americans out there have any common sense in your brain at a level that you can see how wrong and not to mention unfair this is to the cannabis user, particularly when statistics and scientific research have proven that cannabis is the safest therapeutic substance on the planet? 
Is it right that we stand by and allow innocent lives to be ruined because they chose to use a safer substance than the ones we have legal? Is it morally a right to allow the laws that infringe on individual rights to be in place that history has shown will lead to illegal activity, cartels, and innocent people being murdered? Did we learn nothing from alcohol prohibition when cartels like the Capone game were created and operated in violence and murder of innocent citizens? You can say all you want about the cannabis user. Facts show that it is safe. It doesn't kill. It doesn't lead to harder drug use or violent crime. And the only ruinous issue existing with cannabis use is the threat of law enforcement and incarceration. It is your individual right to use or not use cannabis, as it is your right to decide on what food you eat, what beverages you drink, what clothes you wear, what kind of car you drive, what church or religion you choose to believe in. It is not your right to decide whether another human being, an American citizen, chooses to eat, drink, or smoke, or support laws that try to prevent a citizen from choosing cannabis if that is their choice. This is wrong on so many levels. What amazes me is all of the people out there, many of them using alcohol, cigarettes, and prescription drugs, that talk bad about cannabis and pot smokers, and they base this on the propaganda that they've heard secondhand. Most cannabis smokers do it in the privacy of their own space and are of a threat to no one. But to listen to the ignorant people of America, you would think that violent criminals are waiting around the corner smoking a joint and are going to bop you in the head with a stick when you walk by. Where have you been to think this happens? You certainly aren't in that private space smoking the joint with him. That's more than obvious. Between the DEA, Homeland Security, Bureau of Prisons, and the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Justice, we spend over $200 billion annually for chasing, arresting, and incarcerating cannabis users in this country. This is in no way compares to the cost of the innocent lives being murdered, not only in this country and south of the border, by violent cartels just because we have a law in place that allows their very existence and allows them to operate in this fashion. Sadly enough, there's more. By allowing the laws against the safest herb on the planet, we also kill the hemp industry in, in, in this country with the original stupidity of the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. This destroyed one of the original ind industries of colonial times that existed up to the passage of the act and was a billion dollar industry in the 30s during the depression times. Economists project today that if hemp was restored just to the level it was when it was made illegal that it would be a trillion and a half dollar industry today. Let's look at the numbers that show this. An acre of hemp yields 30 barrels of fuel which at $70 a barrel would yield $2,100 per acre. Wait a minute, that's not all. It yields a ton of the strongest fiber in the world, far superior to any textile produced. If you take the price from the World War II days when the government reinstated the Hemp for Victory campaign, the fiber then was selling for 10 cents a pound. So we get another $200 per acre for the farmer. Now we're up to $2,300 an acre. Wait, that's not all. We also produce 5,000 pounds of fiber in addition to the fuel and fiber. We also produce 5,000 pounds of, of cellulose herds that in the 30s produced over 50,000 different products from dynamite to paper. And this was worth 15 cents a pound in the 30s. That's another $750 an acre to the farmer. Now the total is up to $3,050 per acre for the farmer. Wait a minute, we're not done yet. It also produces, in addition to the fuel, the fiber, and the herds, six tons of seed that after being pressed to generate the hemp fuel can be fed to cattle and is three times more nutritious than the current feed made from corn and sorghum produced at a much costly process. This feed would generate another $600 per acre for the farmer. That brings our total to $3,650 per acre. And that makes the production of beef cheaper to produce and a healthier product. Wait a minute, we're not done yet. In addition to everything already talked about, this acre of hemp also yields six tons of cannabis flowers for smoking. And if we sold it just for what tobacco farmers get for tobacco at $1.75 a pound, this would yield another $21,000 per acre, bringing the total to $23,650 per acre. 
Cannabis smokers would rejoice for cannabis selling at $1.75 a pound, particularly when you look for the facts that weak cannabis coming from Mexico, they're currently paying the cartel $500 a pound. Remember, these yields from hemp production were done in the 30s with farm equipment ancient to comp to compared to today's standards and with fiber and cellulose prices from the 30s. What would be generated today with all of our advances in farm equipment and computers? How many new industries and jobs would be generated just to build modern equipment for the processing of hemp and manufacturing and engineering alone? This is the best way. This is way better than the $825 per acre that the corn farmer gets for his 150 bushels he generates or the oat farmer for his 60 bushels he generates at $2.50 a bushel or the 30,000 pounds of potato Potatoes, the potato farmer sells for $0.08 cents an, a pound, yielding $1,600 an acre. 25 million acres of corn of the total 88 million acres that is planted in this country of corn is grown for fuel alcohol to be added as a fuel substitute. This is done by a very polluting process that p totally pollutes the ground it is growing, rendering it unsuitable for food crops ever again and it's an environmental disaster erupting at the mouth of the Ris Mississippi River and other major tributaries from the chemical runoff from these farms that are growing it. This 25 million acres of corn alcohol yields about 20 billion dollars. If you grew hemp on that same 25 million acres, the fuel alone would generate $57 billion or two and a half times more revenue and would not pollute any land or river habitats as does the polluting corn growing process for fuel. Also, if we grew renewable hemp, our fuel cost to run our cars would be around a dollar and a half a gallon, not three fifty and upwards. Plus, we save our river systems, which ultimately will save us. Land that has hemp grown on it for three years will have enough leaf litter fall from the hemp plant that the organic content in the soil will be tripled. It doesn't need dangerous pesticides or commercial fertilizers to grow it, and it would render barren soil in three years to a level of being able to produce food crops. No other crop grown has this ability. No plant on the face of the earth grows at the rate of the cannabis plant which makes it an excellent choice for carbon dioxide removal compared to any plant growing next to it. Plus, we don't have to cut down the forests of America, which filter the air we breathe, 50,000 of which are cut to make a paper by a polluting process just to print Sunday papers in this country. Hemp paper is made by a cheaper, non-polluting process, and you would have to grow 40 times more area in trees to generate the paper yield from one acre of hemp. Plus, the hemp paper is stronger, more durable, and of a better quality. When hemp was being grown legally in this country, even during Depression times of the 30s, the industry offered jobs to people who couldn't find work elsewhere. What would it do for the job market to bring this trillion and a half dollar industry back to fruition today? What would it do for our economy to, to replace the 20 million barrels of oil that we bring into this country every day with homegrown hemp oil where the 750 billion dollars we give to the Arabs every year for their oil would stay here in our country in our economy how many jobs would that generate the beauty is it doesn't take it away from any industry already in place that does employ American citizens because we're putting this money into foreign hands for their oils and that could be produced here some of these foreign countries that we pump so much money to for their precious oil are enemies, enemies of ours, and they wind up flying planes into our buildings. America, it's time to wake up from this slumber we are in. It's time to right this wrong put in place in the 30s by a bunch of crooked, short-sighted politicians and magnified by crony Nixon in 1970 with the Controlled Substance Act and the formation of the most dangerous gang in America, the DEA. It is really worth is it really worth the $200 billion a year we spend in enforcement and incarceration? Is it really worth the thousands upon thousands of people murdered at the hands of violent cartels because we have a stupid law in place? Is it worth keeping a trillion and a half dollar industry that could put America back to work, strengthen our economy, and completely rid us of our dependency on foreign oil from our enemies' sideline? Is it really that we... As Americans allow our government to operate on one of the biggest set of lies ever told to the citizens of our country, 
Is it right that we continually ruin the lives of productive, innocent citizens of our country? Is it right that we continually ruin the lives of innocent, productive citizens that have chosen for themselves to use the safest therapeutic substance on the, on the planet when deadly alcohol, cigarettes, and prescription drugs are legal? Is it right that we incarcerate citizens who have been made criminals by a law that shouldn't exist, yet alone be allowed to go to the extremes that it has done over the last eight decades in this country? Does it bother any of you that are human beings that the 60,000 people murdered south of the border by the cartels that we would allow this to exist and that it's a result of our stupid laws and the DEA enforcement in Mexico and elsewhere? Does it bother any of you as citizens of America, the land of the free, that we would allow the deaths here in our own country of 120,000 people who were sent to prison for possession of cannabis and died there after they contracted AIDS? We have the largest prison population in the world, 65% of which is in there for nonviolent drug crimes like cannabis possession. And we still arrest nearly 1 million citizens a year in this country for cannabis possession and have been doing so since 1970, passage of the Controlled Substance Act. If none of this bothers you, then I doubt that anything will change. I, and, we will, and we will continue this downward cycle of problems that has plagued our nation that we created. But it's illegal will be the only response we hear from you brainwashed members of this great nation that have fallen hook, line, and sinker for the biggest lies ever told and fab fabricated. Get your head out of your ass, America. If nothing else, smoke a damn joint. Maybe then your brain will wake up and use the receptor sites you were born with and enlighten you to the truth about cannabis and not to the lives you have believed erroneously for so long. The 50 million cannabis users don't want to have to get a prescription from a doctor to possess cannabis without retribution from law enforcement. This medical marijuana scheme is wrong. Cannabis is an herb, not a narcotic. It's not addictive and should not be treated like some of the hardcore prescription drugs. Cannabis smokers nationwide are outraged that a safe herb could be turned over to doctors and a medical industry who have notoriously scoffed at herbal treatments. Now that doctors have dollar signs in their eyes to be able to issue the medical mar marijuana cards, they're acting like they've just discovered this new medical wonder, when in reality, it's the pot smokers who have always known of the beneficial attributes of cannabis, both medicinally and as an important textile and food source. This knowledge was known to civilizations that existed 10,000 years ago and was very much in practice in colonial times when our nation was founded. Hemp was such an important commodity that citizens were required by law to grow it. How could we have so stupidly thrown away an industry of such magnitude? Large prescription drug companies are the ones that are behind medical marijuana and their attempts to narcotize a safe herb that is not a narcotic or addictive because they want to take this market away from the cartels. Because once cannabis is made legal, 85% of their deadly prescription drugs with unknown side effects will be completely replaced by the cannabis herb, which is completely safe, non-addictive, and whose only side effect is a sensation of euphoria and good feeling. How many side effects from any prescription drug out there can compete with that? If you don't have a plan on having alcohol and cigarette users to get a prescription and carry a card for the deadly substance they use, then you can't expect the cannabis user to carry one for the safe substance we use that has never killed anyone. Complete legalization is the only pathway. Place an age limit on stores and retail stores that sell cannabis herb just like you do alcohol and cigarettes and make the money off the sales tax. This is absolutely insane that we w worry about our children getting a hold of cannabis. If any of us had any brains, we'd know. Hopefully, they get a hold of cannabis way before alcohol, cigarettes, or prescription drugs. The real revenues generated from making cannabis legal will not be through the sale of the cannabis flowers for smoking. Once cannabis is legal, the illicit cartel price that have, ex have existed since Nixon's stupidity and crookedness will drop off to nearly what tobacco sells for. The bulk of revenues that will be generated will be 
coming from the hemp industry through the sale of the fuel and the over 50,000 products that can be made from this unique textile. The hemp industry can begin simply by planting the seeds. Thank you for your time. I'm Kerry Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner. I'm an American citizen. I'm a college graduate. I'm the father of four children, all who've attended and graduated institutes of higher learning. I'm a successful self-employed businessman for 25 years, and I've been a daily cannabis user for 45 years, and I'm proud to admit it. And I've never made a trip to a doctor's office for my entire adult life, and I'm not plagued by any health issues, and I do not use drugs of any shape or any form. I also had perfect attendance in first through the 12th grade of school without missing one day in 12 years. Thank you.